Hello, everybody. I'm Gene Girdley, along with Ted Ings, and our special guest today, John Christensen, documentary filmmaker and co-author of the best-selling book, Fish. John, welcome to the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Well, thank you, guys. I really appreciate this time together. John, welcome. Uh, you know, going back even some 20 years, Gene would often tell me about the enthusiasm of the Pike Place fish market in uh, Seattle, and I had to go up and see it for myself. Uh, tell us the story behind fish. Well, here's a little bit of background. Uh, I grew up in a filmmaking family. I'm an only kid. My dad was a documentary filmmaker. And at one point after graduating from college and, you know, taking the world on by myself, he said, why don't you come and join me? So I said, okay. So I came into the documentary film world working with my father and a little bit of background, my father made a film in the 80s about paradigms. We've all heard the word paradigms. And I truly believe it was my father and a futurist named Joel Barker that took that word from science and placed it in the business vernacular. I saw the video on Paradigm with his partner in it going yep. back in the mid-90s. I remember that. Yep, yep. So Barker. I stand on my father's and Joel's shoulders of saying they got us into the business world documentary film business. And I wanted to prove... To, well, two things, a father to a son saying, hey, dad, look at, I've made it. But also he being my mentor, I really wanted to prove to him that his, his mentorship, his, his teaching, you know, stuck. So I, I wrote this little scenario of saying, I want to make a film about people doing their work with passion. So I stuck that in my, you know, little portfolio and said, you know, I'm going to look for these people. Now, the little instigator of that was, there's a film called Flashdance out there. It's a, it's a film in the 80s about a woman who wants to be a dancer, but she during the day, she's a welder. But her story was interesting, but there was one story in there that I saw. There was a traffic officer in this film that was dancing to his job. And he's in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the wintertime, full garb, white gloves on, and he's directing traffic dancing. So I was like, wow, my goodness, if a guy can stand out in the cold and dance to his job, Shouldn't there be places where people are dancing to their jobs? Well, it took me a long time to find that, but I was working on another project with the, with the poet in the woods in the, nor in the Northeast, in the Northwest. And we went and filmed him in the woods for three days. His name is David Wood, and he brings poetry to corporate America, which was another interesting story. But we were in the woods with David talking about wholeheartedness. And his one statement is really sticks with me that we spend more time in our places of work than we do in our places of worship, in the great outdoors, or with our friends or family. What a shame it is that we can't be wholehearted in what we do. So those were three days in the woods with David. And then I went to Seattle on Friday night. He, he was on an island, Woodby Island, just north of Seattle for those three days. Went to Seattle Friday night, Saturday morning I got up and I, I love the shop. So I asked the front desk, hey, where do you see the sights and sounds of shopping in Seattle? And they said, oh, you've got to go to Pike Place Market. So lo and behold, I went to the Pike Place Market, started on the north end, worked my way down. There's a whole bunch of food vendors and flower vendors. And there's a guy roasting nuts there. So the smells and the sights are, you know, just illuminating your whole system. And in the distance, I hear laughter. I'm going, what's that laughter? And as I walk through the market, there's, there's guitarists singing, you know, street performers. There's a guy with a piano that he wheels around town. And so I thought it was street performers that was, you know, a comedian or something down the road. So I finally got up to the crowd and the crowd almost parted for me. And lo and behold, here I'm standing there thinking I'm watching street performers, but then there's fish flying through the air and these spectacular one-handed catches that these gentlemen are, are doing. And I'm not watching a street performer, per se. I'm watching this fish market. These guys are working. But I'm seeing these antics. Now I see little, I see a fishmonger in his big orange rubber pants and his big, you know, vest on, and he's hugging customers. And I'm going, wow, they're hugging customers. They're having this engagement. They're having this fun. And then I see one little episode that happens. One of the fishmongers, his name is Sean. He's a crazy redhead in the film. He goes and gets a live crawdad and brings it over to a little boy, about a five-year-old little boy. And the little snappers on the crawdad cling to the little boy's jacket. The little boy screams bloody murder, starts crying. 
Sean sees this. He takes the crawdad back, puts it in the bucket, gets down on his hands and knees in his orange rubber pants, looks the little boy in the eye and says, I'm so sorry I scared you. Can I have a hug? And I see the little boy go, oh, just take a big sigh. Now I saw more care and love in that little interaction with Sean and the little boy than I did Monday back in Minneapolis with my pediatrician and my five-year-old daughter having terrible, terrible asthma attacks. So those moments of the throwing of the fish, catching one-handed catches, hugging customers, engaging with customers, seeing this one little moment with Sean. And then I got up the courage to say, Sean, what's going on here? And he says, did you have lunch today? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, did the waiter or waitress connect with you? And I said, Meh. he said, they were probably nice, you know, gave you your meal, handed you the check and said, thank you, have a nice day. And I said, that was about it. Then he did this. He goes, this moment, this moment is yours and mine. How can I serve you? And the whole thing came right then and there of this aha moment, this ha ah! piece of saying, this is my place. I found my place where the people are doing their work with passion. And so I got the courage up to ask Sean and the other guys, hey, who's the owner and can I talk to him? Can you get me on the phone? And I did a little you know, dance and got nervous and called the owner finally, Johnny Yokoyama, his name was. And I asked him and he said, yes. And lo and behold, the rest is history. I got there and we created this wonderful film. Uh, John, the fish philosophy has been, you've applied it successfully in many industries. Right. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the automotive industry and some, some dealers who've used it, embraced it, and been able to sustain it? Over yes. Time? Well, uh, our, our, one of our happy clients that I'm most, most proud of is Rochester Motors in Rochester, Minnesota. They were one of the first ones who took it on even as a whole company, they took it on the whole philosophy. And when they first started, they were known as the worst dealership in Rochester. This young man had bought it from an, another you know, owner and had wanted to turn it over. And so he wanted to get a new reputation out there. So they literally put a billboard on Highway 55 on top of their area that said, come try our fish. Rochester Ford Toyota back then. And people said, what do you mean? We're going to a car dealer to try fish? Are we having a fish boil? What, what, you know, this Wisconsin type of thing? What are you doing? They said, no, come in and see how we treat you. And the rest is history there. I believe they've been living it for over 15 years there. They've increased their numbers. They've got other dealerships. They've done a collision department, I believe. And last time I checked, uh, they were doing quite well with it. They still have fish philosophy on each member's card that states, you know, the, their mission and values and their values and mission encompasses fish. John, this is powerful, powerful stuff and so relevant, especially now more than ever in, uh, in every industry, especially the automotive industry. Uh, how do, um, how do dealers, how do they learn more about, uh, uh, about you, you and your company and, uh, and usually and fishphilosophy.com and we'd love to take care of them. Come there or 1-800-328-3789 is our 1-800 number. Again, 1-800-328-3789. Sorry about the blatant promotion, but <laughs> fishphilosophy.com. We'd love to have you come there and see what we've done and what we can do for you. Again, we want to take in and not just sell them our film and our books, but we want to help them, coach them, encourage their, their engagement with their employees. See, it's really about building relationships. If you build relationships with your employees and take care of your employees, the employees will take care of your customers. I truly believe that. You know, that's what, that's what Southwest Airlines was based on. I believe that's what Saturn was based on, was that if you truly take care of your people, they will love your customers. And John, that follows our philosophy. The car business is not really about cars. It's about people. So, no. Nope. And it. you know, that whole piece that Saturn did of celebrating when people, you know, get their car, 
That, that's yeah. a tremendous thing. I mean, more dealers should be doing that, celebrating. I mean, that's one of the big, you know, your house and your cars are your biggest expenses in your life. Well, college educations too, but I mean, those are one of the three top expenses that people, you should celebrate that. Here's an interesting, just a little sidebar, but we, we heard of a bank that used fish philosophy in Thailand and they celebrated people paying off their car loans and their moped loans. They gave them cakes with cupcakes with candles in it, celebrating that they paid off their loan. What? A bank wants you to keep on paying them. They celebrated when they, when they paid off their loans. Let's look at that. I mean, car dealerships should look at that. We're celebrating that they've, they've invested in us. You know, they've invested in the cars that we sell and they've invested in the service that we will give them. Powerful, John. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Really appreciate it greatly. And take care, everybody. Stay healthy and stay safe. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you, John and Ted. John is just one of the many presenters and speakers and companies that we have join us at the Fixed Ops Roundtable events that we do throughout the year. Maybe you can tell the audience a little bit more about what's coming up next. Gene, we have three events coming up this fall. Uh, the first one is going to be on Thursday, September 24th, 2020, Fixed Ops Roundtable number seven, the greatest show. It's going to be a virtual event. So uh, we are looking forward to probably our, our biggest and um, we have some amazing things ahead for you on September 24th. That'll be followed on Friday, October 23rd, Fixed Op round, Ops Roundtable number eight, the Tire Summit. It's gonna be in Irving, Texas at the La Cima Club, hosted by Tire Profiles and David Boyle. And we're also going to have that available virtually as well. So if you can't join us there, you'll be able to see it online. And later in the year on Thursday, December 3rd, 2020, Fixed Ops Roundtable number nine, with our good friends BG Products at their Technology and Training Center in Wichita, Kansas. And if you can't make it in person, join us virtually because that one will be available online as well. Three big events. All right, Ted, we also have an event program for our Fixed Ops Roundtable events that people can go right to the website and get the digital copy of that program for themselves. That's right. You can come online and learn more about John and the fish philosophy and his company and other speakers from uh, his company as well at Charthouse Learning. Just go to fixedopsroundtableprogram.com. You'll see the entire lineup of speakers that we had, all 48 speakers at the Fixed Ops Roundtable. You can get in touch with them there as well. There are uh, URLs there, emails, and uh, uh, all the information on the event is there. Thanks, Ted. And thank you, John, for joining us today. Well, thank you guys. Really appreciate it. Everyone, we look forward to seeing you at the next big event. On behalf of John Christensen and Ted Ings, I'm Gene Girdley. Thanks for watching.